What's up guys, welcome back to the cave. I'm so glad you're here because today we're talking about golf balls, iPhones, exercise bands, mind control. I'm also gonna share a little wisdom I learned from Arnie Moore and Tom Clum. And if you're a beginner in archery and wanna shoot a bow for the first time, this video is for you. Or if you also want a refresher, this video is gonna be beneficial. And I've compiled a ton of information in a really short, concise place right here in this video for you. So if you miss something, you can rewind it. But if you're one of the thousands of people who are new to archery or who have made bows but never shot a bow before, this is really gonna help you out. These are things I wish I knew when I started shooting. The most important thing when shooting a bow is consistency. If you can do the exact same thing every single time, the shot's gonna happen the same every time, which will allow you to have perfect shots every time. But since we're humans and that's impossible, these tips today are gonna show you how to be more consistent. Before you even draw your bow to shoot, there's a couple things you need to know first. And the first thing we wanna look for is comfortability. We wanna be comfortable when we're shooting because if we experience pain or it's not comfortable, it's not gonna be fun. So you're gonna want a tab like this one. It's also a good idea to wear an arm guard so that the string doesn't slap your arm. This can happen even with some more experienced archers. Depending on if you use a tab or a glove can depend on where you grab the string. The two most common ways are three under or split finger. There's other ways such as a thumb ring, but these are the two most common ways. Now with the way I shoot, I shoot three under. So I'll have three fingers underneath. If you shoot split finger, it'll be one finger on top and two under. If you plan on shooting split finger, you're gonna want a tab that's for split finger, and so there's gonna be a little slit in it compared to a tab that's for three under, where there's no split in it. I prefer to shoot three under. I think it's easier to be more consistent. Another thing it does is it gets the arrow up closer to your eye. And personally, I think that makes it easier to aim and be more consistent. I wanna show you guys something that will help you out with traditional archery, whether you're new or not. This product's gonna help you a ton, and it's a product that I'm excited to let you guys know that is new to Shatterproof Archery, Kramer Shatterproof Archery. This is a product we are offering you now, custom leather tabs. Now these tabs are made with real leather, made for the outdoors. To be clear, I don't make these tabs. I'm partnered with a leather worker who is making these just for shatterproof archery. We use the highest quality of leather that is made to withstand a beating in the outdoors. We've also chosen bonded nylon thread. This thread is actually made to be waterproof outside to last through the elements. On top of that, we finish all the edges with beeswax to seal out water or sweat or anything so that this tab will last an extremely long time. These ones are also extremely simple to use because we've got the little clasp on the back, little spring loaded, makes it really easy to adjust. I just love how the contrast looks. I love the logo on the back. This is the first edition ever of this tab. If you want the first edition ever, you better jump on it quick because these things are gonna sell out. We only have a limited amount right now, so if you want the first edition of Kramer Shatterproof Archery Tabs, you need to jump on it. The first one of these tabs I gotten from this leather worker is over a year ago. He's been using them for more than two years, and not only that, but he's been shooting archery for as long or longer than me. And what that means is that this isn't a tab made from just a leather worker. This is a tab made from somebody who shoots it. We've put thousands and thousands of arrows through these tabs to test them to make sure that we have the right product just for you guys. I would never want to bring you anything that's not the best or the top of the line. So anyway, I'm biased, but I think you should be too. These tabs are awesome. If you want one, go get them because they're gonna sell out very fast. When you get ready to shoot, you wanna be standing fairly close to the target at the very beginning with your feet facing perpendicular to the target. And then we get to the draw. So the target's this way, I'm gonna draw back the bow. There's one thing you don't wanna do and that's to draw with a low shoulder. This right here will cause you a lot of pain in the end. And we tend to do that when we have a too heavy high poundage bow. And beginners with a too heavy high poundage bow is probably the most common mistake. So get a bow much lower poundage than you need. I like to make the quick rule of saying, my max draw that I can draw back, drop at at least 25 pounds from there to start off shooting archery. And what you wanna do instead of the low draw is the high draw. So bring your elbow up above the line of the arrow, draw back and rest at what we call an anchor point. And this is the point where it's really comfortable for you to hold it. A lot of people will point the arrow right at the target and try to draw back. And that's that's actually not very natural for our body. This is something Arnie Moore talks about. He talks about how your arrow is gonna be pointing slightly left of the target. And then when you draw back, it's gonna come to the right and come over to the target. This is a comfortable way in a way to get everything 
and alignment. Next, we have to talk about the awesome subject of back tension. This is how you draw a bow back. It is using your back rather than your arm. If you're coming over from shooting a compound bow, this is gonna be the same concept as shooting a compound bow. If you had good form with a compound bow, it's actually pretty easy to transfer over to a traditional bow. We're starting a little bit to the left. We draw back, we engage our back muscles, and everything should be in a line. A way you can test this is have someone get above you with an iPhone, take a picture, take a video, and you can see when you draw back, if from your arrow to the point of your elbow is 100% aligned. Another way you can test this is look in a mirror and see if your elbow is sticking out. It would be somewhat like this. If I draw back and my elbow's sticking out, I don't have good back tension. But if I draw back and everything's in a line, then I have great back tension. We want to avoid using our biceps when we draw back. We want that to be loose. A good way to know if you're using back tension is you can grab an arrow and pull it apart. And if you feel that in your back, that's the muscle you want to use. Another way you can do this is with an exercise band. Tie an exercise band to your elbow. Put the other end of it on your hand, draw this back, and then your forearm's completely loose. This will show you the muscles you need to use in order to have back tension. This might not even be a bad idea to do before you ever even shoot a bow if you never have. Grab an exercise band like this and that'll give you a lot of that motion that you should have when you're drawing the bow back. This might save you a lot of time by never starting any bad habits in the first place. Another way to think about this is think about somebody holding your elbow and you've got to push their hand back with your elbow and that's the motion you want right there. This is really important for consistency and this is something that I neglected when I first started shooting and it caused me a bunch of bad habits. Once we've got everything in alignment with the bow, it's time to release the arrow. But here's the problem. You're doing so many things at once, so what do you think about? Because you can only think about one thing. So of course you want to be thinking about aiming and where to put the arrow exactly on the target. That's actually a lie. Don't think about aiming. You want your subconscious to take over aiming. What Tom Clum says, he always says that your mind only needs to focus on shot activation. What does this mean? This means you're focusing on the back tension and releasing. That's the only thing you can think about. Your subconscious will take over your aiming and where the arrow goes and it'll take care of everything. But what happens if you focus on aiming, your mind defaults to the easiest position. And the easiest position is not holding back tension and releasing through your shot. The easiest position is releasing low and lax and just not focused, which if you've seen any of my other videos, I've done this plenty of times. So what you need to focus on is not aiming, but focus on back tension and everything else will fall in place for you. So what we kind of need to do is trick our minds into shooting this way, making aiming subconscious and our release conscious. A great mental exercise to help you with your release is this, the golf ball. Pretend there's a golf ball just like popping, just sitting right there the whole time. So when you shoot, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the golf ball as quick as possible, right? And that's gonna give you that back tension. Pretend like your thumb's invisible. So you've got, you've got your hook on the string and you release and you just grab that golf ball. This is gonna be doing multiple things for you. First, it separates your aim with the activation of your shot. What your arrow should be doing is just hovering over the bullseye and then you release and it goes there. It shouldn't be like, oh, I'm on the bullseye, I need to release. You need to separate the aim with the activation of your shot. This golf ball drill, uh, the imaginary golf ball, does that. The second thing this drill does for you, which we already talked about, is back tension. By you bringing your hand to your shoulder, what that's doing is having your elbow go in the line it needs to go back there, releasing and letting your fingers just slip off the string. Which leads into the third thing this drill does for you. It keeps us from plucking the string. It needs to be natural. Our forms, our muscles need to be so loose that our fingers are just slipping off the string and just kind of bouncing back into place. It's like you're setting a bucket down or dropping a book or something where it just naturally falls off, you know? But if you're trying to catch that thing, then it's not natural. So if you're trying to catch that string, you're gonna pull it, you're gonna plick it, you're gonna pluck it, you're gonna mess the stinking string up. And by messing the string up this way, your arrows aren't gonna fly consistency. But if your whole form's released, if you're reaching back to grab that golf ball, it's gonna make it really loose and the string's just gonna slip right off your finger perfectly. This is my biggest fault when shooting. I'm kinda passionate about it because I'm trying to fix it right now. But if you're just starting, avoid that mistake. Do the mental exercise of reaching back, grabbing that exercise, and you're performing and creating three great habits in your mind when you're practicing at the very beginning when you're starting shooting. And with this in mind, you can release your first arrow. I would recommend starting extremely close to the target. Get the shot down, get how it feels down, and then you can move back as you want. 
So you can use an iPhone to video yourself or have someone video you so that you can make sure everything's in alignment. You can use the mental imagery of a golf ball to make sure you create three good habits at once. You can use an exercise band to either strengthen your back or for the first time you're shooting, feel how back tension should be. And we also learn mind control by focusing on the release and by pulling through and using that back tension and focusing on the important things so that target panic doesn't happen. If you're focusing on that aiming, target panic will happen. And that is how you shoot a bow. I know I didn't cover everything here. I covered as much as I could in the small amount of time. There are differing opinions, but this is what I think is important if you're starting to shoot a bow for the first time. Rewatch some of this if you need to. I hope this helps you out. For the people who are here trying to shoot a bow for the first time, if you need a tab or a bowstring, you can buy that from my company, Shatterproof Archery. Link in the description. We hand make everything we sell so far. It's a great way to support small business, so I thank everyone who has purchased. And on that note, it's been great hanging out with you guys. I'm for you. Remember that. Stay positive. We'll see you later. Or if you're experienced archery, this will help you out. Spider on the lens. I want to help.